for any kind of a discussion on what matters in literary research today. Professor Zafar Khan has had an international exposure. He had his education in India earlier and then went on to um, the UK and the USA where he studied and also taught. And he's also had a long stint in Nigeria. This international exposure, again, contributes very centrally, in my opinion, to any discussion of literary research. Because if you're talking about English, which is, I think, the subject of our concern, it's a global language. And it also promises to be a global literature, because literatures in English come from various parts of the world. And therefore, a person with international experience like him ought to be able to say something very, very relevant on the issue. On my left here is Professor Wayupa Tosa, whom I met for the first time in January when I happened to be in her university, Mahasarakam University in Thailand. And she gave a scintillating lecture on story tales, on, on, on folk tales. And she's a fantastic storyteller. Maybe in a panel discussion like this, that aspect of her uh, personality may not perhaps get adequate exposure. But let me tell you that you don't need too much uh, provocation to get her to tell you a story. And I think the fact that she's interested in folklore and folk culture uh, matters to me very, very centrally again, because literary studies today is no longer the literary study of even 20 years ago. When some of us began research, we had a very narrow conception of English, and we used to think of the literary work as an autonomous text or an autonomous uh, artifact which needed to be looked at in terms of its structure and texture, in terms of its thematic values, and in terms of its narrative qualities. But over the last 20 or 25 years, so much has happened in English studies, and we don't talk about a literary work anymore. We talk about a literary text. And when we speak of a literary text, we have a whole range of sign systems in mind. We are not talking only about the verbal text, because a literary text has its way of moving into other texts, like sculpture, or painting, or even cinema. And clearly, you can't talk about a high literature, as Northrop Fry used to, without also, as he did, talking about a popular literature. Because it is from the folk and from the subaltern or from the earth that the initial impulses for literary creati creativity come. And I think what passes for high literature or classical literature or literature which is read and studied in the classroom, canonical literature, to a large extent, um, is informed by this folk context. Therefore, when we're taking, talking about literary texts, we are also talking about cultural study. And I think this dimension is something which Professor Vayupatosa will be able to speak about with a great deal of inwardness. Now, the way we are going to go about this is that Professor Zafar Khan will moderate the discussion, and I will invite Professor Katimani first to make a presentation for about five minutes or so, outlining some of the basic ideas he has, and that can be followed by Professor Zafar Khan's intervention, and then Professor Vayupa Tosa, and then we'll have a kind of a, a talk between ourselves, because this is not as though each one of us is going to hold forth for the next 20 minutes or so. We want to be able to convey to you the sense of an intellectual discussion. That is the purpose of this panel discussion. So without much ado, may I request <coughs> Professor Zafar Khan to moderate the discussion, and I invite Professor Katimani to make his first presentation. Adab, Chairperson, Chairman, uh, Professor Mohanji Ramanan, Professor Jafarullah Khanji, Professor Vajupato Shah,
Professor at the department, uh, Amina Kishorji, ladies and gentlemen, student friends. <coughs> I am a little bit worried. My English is not so good. But I will try to deliver the goods properly. Last year, Professor Ramnan rightly pointed out, I presented a uh, paper in English in his department. <coughs> The main theme was Dalit autobiographies and their main dearth, caste, birth, and hunger. I have examined some Hindi autobiographies some Marathi autobiographies and all Kannada autobiographies because Kannada is my mother tongue. <coughs> Here, I have tried to see why the Dalit literature is focus only on hungry, hunger, bread, roti. And the Dalit writers, almost all, they are in search of their father. Their main question is, who is my father? Like, it was mainly focused in Akarmashi, written by Sharan Kumar Limbale. <coughs> Just I will present two, three minutes. Literature is a respect, respectful activity. Justice, human values, and human love is the principal focus of literature. People have no faith in religion and politics. But till today, they have a little faith in literature. Literature makes the people sensitive, sensitive towards himself, herself, sensitive towards others also. Literature is the watchdog of the human values. So it is expected from the writer that one's acts and writing should be in harmony. The renowned Indian saint writer Kabir has described it <clears throat> there is no, th there should not be a difference between Kathini or Karni. The subaltern literature, literature of oppressed, popularly known as Indian Dalit literature, is the literature of human cry, human cry for natural justice and brotherhood, human cry for self-respect and social respect. Today, Dalit literature has crossed across the Marathi and Maharashtra boundary and it has spread all over the country. Dalit writers of Punjabi, Hindi, Gujarati, Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, Oriya, Bengali, Kannada, and even Urdu are widely discussed. Of course, comparatively, the Marathi literature is widely spread. The Marathi Dalit writing, especially Dalit autobiographies, have inspired the Indian Dalits to express their sorrow and joy. The Marathi Dalit autobiographies have molded the popular trends of Indian literature. They have defined the literature in a novel way. The autobiographies have expanded the horizons of Indian literary criticism. The, the established measures of the poetics have been derooted and the now poetics is established. One of my new book is coming in Hindi. Its title is Dalit Sahitka Samaj Shastra. The sociology of Dalit literature around, it is around 380 pages. 
पी सोनकांबले आठवणांचे पक्षी दयापवार्स बलूत लक्ष्मण मानेस उपरा शरणकुमार लिंबालेस अक्रमाशी गायकवाड्स लक्ष्मण गायकवाड्स उचल्या दादा साहेब मल्लारी मोरेस गबाळ शंकरराव खराट्स तराल अंतराल आर द वाईडली डिस्कस दलित ऑटोबायोग्रफी ऑटोबायोग्राफीज ऑफ मराठी लिटरेचर ओम प्रकाश वाल्मिकीज जूठन इट इज अ पॉप्युलर नॉवेल लास्ट इयर आय ट्रान्सलेटेड इट इन टू इंग्लिश द ट्रान्सलेशन वॉज अवॉर्डेड बाय कनडा साहित्य अकॅडमी मोहनदास नै नैमिश्रायस अपने अपने पिंजरे कौशल्य बैत बैसंत्रीस जस्ट हियर इट्स टायटल दोहरा अभिशाप कर्स ट्वाईस ॲज ए वुमन शी वॉज कर्स ॲज ए दलित शी वॉज कर्स सूरजपाल चौहान्स तिरस्कृत आर द सम ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टंट हिंदी ऑटोबायोग्राफीज सिद्धलिंग यास ओरुकेरी इन कनडा नाव इट इज इन इंग्लिश ऑल्सो तुंबाडी रामयास मणेगारा अरविंद मालगतीस गवर्नमेंट ब्राह्मण लक्ष्मण संभोळी मुळूर नागराज मरण मंडल मध्यदोळगे इन कनडा अँड जोसेफ मेकवान्स अंगलियात इन गुजरात गुजराती आर द इम्पॉर्टंट ऑटोबायोग्राफीज ऑफ द अदर इंडियन लँग्वेजेस आफ्टर केअरफुल एक्झामिनेशन ऑफ दीज ऑटोबायोग्राफीज द क्वेश्चन विल अराईज दॅट वॉट आर द मेन सेक्टर्स आर डेल्ट विथ स्ट्रगल फॉर एक्झिस्टन्स इज द मेन क्वेस्ट फॉर दीज रायटिंग्स इट मे बी दया पवार ओम प्रकाश वाल्मिकी जोसेफ मेकवान आर अरविंद मालगत्ती इन कनडा दे आर ऑल इन्सल्टेड ह्युमिलिएटेड बिकॉज ऑफ देअर प्रोफेशन अँड देअर नेम सर नेम अँड ऑल्सो बिकॉज ऑफ देअर पॉवर्टी अल्टिमेटली देअर कास्ट द ऑटोबायोग्राफीज आर द सोल रिप्रेझेंटेटिव्ह ऑफ देअर कंटेम्पररी सोसायटी देअर सारो देअर हंगर देअर एगोनी बिलॉंग टू देअर होल दलित सोसायटी द हिस्टॉरिकल फाईट टू अवॉइड अनटचेबिलिटी अँड हंगर द एज ओल्ड स्ट्रगल इज कंटिन्यूड सोशल रिजेक्शन इज द कॉमन कॉज इन एव्हरी दलित ऑटोबायोग्राफी द दलित्स आर हार्ड वर्कर्स अँड रेस्टलेस स्टील दे आर हंगरी वाय अगेन द कास्ट सिस्टीम हॅज मेड अ रोल दॅट द अनटचेबल शुड नॉट आस्क एनिथिंग फॉर दिस सर्व्हिस ही शुड वर्क ॲज बेगार खान साहेब यु नो बेगार विदाउट ए पेनी बेगारी इज नथिंग बट स्लेवरी अँड इज स्लेवरी हॅज मेड द दलित्स हेल्पलेस सो दे आर हंगर फेदर लक्ष्मण गायकवाड आर सिद्धलिंगय्या आर जोसेफ मेकवान दे आर ऑल हंगरी देअर हंगर इज अ रिझल्ट ऑफ सोशल हेरारकी इन इंडिया सम ऑटोबायोग्राफीज आर आउटला ऑफ देअर बर्थ देअर बर्थ इट सेल्फ इज हंटिंग दॅम लाईक एनिथिंग शरणकुमार लिंबाळे हॅज एक्सप्लेन्ड हिज एंग्विश इन अकरमाशी आय कोट आय वॉज अफ्रेड ऑफ माय कास्ट माय फादर हिज कास्ट हिज रिलिजन दे वेअर नॉट माईन आय एम गेटिंग ऑल बेनिफिट्स इन द नेम ऑफ हिंदू हलिया बट आय एम नॉट अनटचेबल बिकॉज हिज फादर वॉज नॉट अनटचेबल द हायर कास्ट ब्लड इज सर्क्युलेटिंग इन माय बॉडी इफ पॉसिबल द ड्रॉप ऑफ ब्लड फ्रॉम माय वेन्स विल बी ड्रेन आउट बाय मी आय हेट माय बॉडी बट आय एम कर्स टू लिव्ह माय होलगेरी हॅमलेट इज सफरिंग फ्रॉम धिस कर्स वी आर ऑल सेलिंग इन द सेम बोट इयर्स टुगेदर आय हॅव स्लीपलेस नाईट्स बिकॉज ऑफ द इनह्युमन ॲक्ट्स ऑफ धीस जमीनदार्स अक्रमाश बर्थ इज ॲन ॲक्सिडेंट नो बडी इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर देअर बर्थ बट दलित्स आर ह्युमिलेटेड बिकॉज ऑफ देअर बर्थ सो लिंबाळे इज रेडी टू ड्रेन आउट द ब्लड 
which is flowing in his veins because of his own father. He can call the Jamindar as his father, but the father is not ready to accept his own blood as his son. Now the question arises that how the Indian politics will evaluate the Akramasi or Akramasantan. The rating is not for Swanta Sukhaya like Tulsida. There is no Navaras like Abhigyana Shakuntalam. There is no search for peace like war and peace. There is no Vedanta like Vemana. Then where it should be classified? Yes, certainly the evaluation of Dalit literature needs a separate, a separate yardstick. Sociology, anthropology, and new moral ethics to be included in the Dalit poetics. The chemistry of the hunger, the inhuman face of the Hindu religion, discriminated education system, be thought of while evaluating the Dalit autobiographies. In total, we must go out of text to analyze the Dalit texts. Then only we may come to know the agony behind the Dalit autobiographies. Socio-anthropological study of the Dalit autobiographies is the need of the hour. Then only one can understand the power of expression of a Dalit, because the expression of words itself is strong weapon to fight against the social justice. We have to examine a question that what is the reaction of the so-called allied class who are responsible for the hunger and exploitation of the Dalits? <clears throat> are they serious about the impact of Dalit writings? Do they feel guilty? These are the questions in front of us to discuss. Sir? I took much time. At the same time, I would like to I would like to say another few words about Adivasi discourse, Adivasi literature. This is another phenomenon. It is most important. Another culture, another study in the uh, uh, modern era, post-colonial study of Indian literature. And another thing, I, I wrote a, one book about. Uh, it's, I, will, I will just uh, uh, explain its uh, title in Hindi. <coughs> Muslim Vimarsh, Bharatiya Sahitri. Muslim discourse, Vimarsh is equivalent to discourse in Hindi. Muslim discourse in Indian languages, Indian uh, literature. Uh, these are the some facts, some figures, some writings. Uh, where I can put some words. I, am, I think I am able to say something about uh, the literature. Just uh, I, I said few words about Adivasi discourse. Uh, Adivasi discourse and Dalit discourse, they are totally separate. Adivasis, even Dalits, they are within the folds of village, Uru, Gaon. But the, uh, Adivasis, they are out of village and they are out of forest. Their main area, focus area was, uh, once upon a time it was uh, jungle, forest. Now, our government, uh, its policy, they said you must vacate the jungle because it is notified, notified as reserved forest. Actually, the forest was reserved for Adivasis. Forest was protected by Adivasis. Forest was watered by Adivasis. Now they have, uh, they have forced to leave the forest. They are, even they are not in forest, they are out of forest and they are out of village. They are out of uh, human hamlet. <coughs> this is the uh, Sankat, we used to call it in Hindi or in uh, Indian languages. Uh, this is the Sankat of Adivasis. Same problem with Muslim discourse. Around 20 lady writers in Hindi 
I translated their 20 stories into Kannad and into Gujarati with the help of Joseph McQuan. There, we can see the anguish, their perspective, their way of life, uh, th their way to see the life about religion, about language. Uh, even some writers wrote about Burkha, wrote about their language, wrote about uh, Parda system, wrote about, uh, there were 22 uh, stories, uh, mostly within a uh, sh short period, I think within one month, it will be both, uh, two books will be published from Sahit Academy. Uh, Hindi mein uska, uska naam mein rakha tha, Musliman Bagi Aurate. the revolutionary Muslim writer. Uh, I think I should finish my uh, thing. Uh, I must be thankful to Professor Ramana Kishore, uh, Professor Ramanan, and all of you. Thank you very much. Namaskar.